Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Seven Circles, Jonathan. I want to talk to you guys about something really, really serious. It's been on my mind for a while, and I was trying to figure out how am I going to deliver this message, and I don't really know, so I'm just going to freestyle and put it out. Look, here's the deal. When you look at nature, right, nature has an array of shapes, colors, sizes, textures, all kinds of things, right? But one thing that you never see really in nature is something of white powder. Maybe you might see it, I'm not sure, but I've never seen white powder. White powder, right? You might, even when it comes to like um, salt, like we're, we're used to salt being like um, white, you know, sodium chloride, but that's actually made in the laboratory. If you actually like get Himalaya salt is pink or they got black salt or they got different types of like sea salts, but they aren't white in color, okay? When you think about sugar, okay, um, sugar is not white in color. We got this powdered sugar, this confectionery sugar, this um, granulated sugar, and it's like pristine white, right? But um, that's not how it is in nature. That's not how it is in nature. Sugar is actually manufactured very similar to the way that cocaine is uh, manufactured. And I actually have two videos, one about how sugar is made, and I'm going to put it in this video, and one about how um, cocaine is made, and I put that in here as well, but let's just talk about this a little bit, because I really want you guys to understand this, is that, you know, even when it comes to something like baking soda, or baking powder, okay, what is baking powder? Baking powder is a combination of baking soda, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but then there's also something called cream of tartar. What is cream of tartar? Cream of tartar is a byproduct off of um, off of some type of process. I forget what it is, but I don't think that it's good for the body to have that. You know, you think about cornstarch. That's what's also in baking powder. Cornstarch, cream of tartar, and baking soda. Uh, cornstarch, it being white like that, and just in that powder form, what is that actually really? Because I don't see any corn being that white color like that. There's so many white powders out there, even citric acid. A long time ago, citric acid was invented so that they could get rid of scurbies. Because a lot of people, they weren't getting the appropriate amount of vitamin C when they were going on voyages and, and expeditions and things like that. So they found out that they were lacking vitamin C in their diet, so they invented something called citric acid, and that kind of got rid of the scurvy. Now, citric acid, if you notice, it's in everything. It's in apple juice, it's in orange juice, it's in candies, it's in all kinds of stuff. And they used to get citric acid from lemons, but now it's not made from lemons anymore. Now it's actually made from some type of black mold. And um, from according to the research that I did, it's not beneficial for you at all. And there are so many white powders. Keep in mind, I used to be a chef. So I know when it comes down to like food science and... Um, you know, you start getting really uh, intricate intricate on the things that uh, you were making, such as, you know, all these different types of um, so-called foods. People start adding white powders in there. White powder, this, a little bit of that. This is a, a, a stabilizer. This is a thickening agent. This is a, um, a, a flavor enhancement. Whatever these white powders are, I'm talking about don't trust them because we think that a little bit is fine, okay? Just a little bit is fine. Just a little bit. But what happens if you take just a little bit of cocaine? That can make a huge impact on your psychology. That can make a huge impact on your decision making. What happens if you take just a little bit of sugar? Have you ever noticed, like, for instance, because this channel, right, we talk about meditation, right? And I put out a video about um, how important it is to not eat prior to meditation and also to make sure that you are having a, a diet that is as natural as possible so that you can tap into those higher energies. But if we're eating foods and these foods have these white powders in them and we don't know what they are, right? We don't we don't know what's in our food, then guess what? We are setting ourselves up for devastation. We're setting ourselves up for unsuccess. We're setting ourselves up for failure. Right? Our people perish because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. The three re reasons why people don't succeed 
One of them is because of ignorance. They didn't know. The other one is arrogance, which means to overly express one's importance. And the other one is disobedience. They know, but they do it anyway. Arrogance, disobedient, and um, what was the other one I said? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we got to really be careful on what we're putting inside of our tempo. It's very, very, very important. Oh, yeah, it was uh, ignorance. Ignorance, arrogance, and disobedience. But, yeah, it's important what we put inside of our temple. This is what we got, man. This is what we got. This is what we got. So let's take care of, let's, let's take care of it. I have a couple videos that I want to show you. One is of a news clip, and they're talking about similar to what I'm talking about, okay? Another one is about how sugar is made. Watch this video. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. And notice what they put inside of the sugar. Because when they're making this white granulated sugar, notice the chemicals that they put inside of it. A lot of people think that sugar is just, oh, you take a sugar cane and then you drain it out and then that's it and you got the sugar. No, 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 no. Sugar is manufactured and it has chemicals in it. It's a poison. It's a drug. It's a drug. What happens when you cook down stuff? Because a lot of these things, you're cooking them down, right? Cocaine, you cook it down. It, it's a drug. You're changing the structure of it. It's no longer sugar as nature intended it. So be careful with these things that you put in your body. You know, it's to the point where I don't even know what to eat anymore. I really don't know what to eat. And so I'm happy I'm going on this breathitarian, or I am on this breathitarian journey because I know eventually I'll be full free, even though I'm not right now. But so many things that I used to could enjoy, now they taste like poison. They really taste like poison. I can't enjoy them. Things make me bloated. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you're feeling the same thing, the same way too, but that's what I'm going through. Anyway, the first video I'm going to show you is a news clip, okay? Right after that, I'm going to show you another video, which I found extraordinary, and that's how sugar is made. So I'm going to end it on that note, um, and write some comments down low and let me know what you think, because, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we want to go into meditation and we want to tap into these higher frequencies and bring these frequencies down and integrate them with our anatomy, our body, our psyche, so that we could now ascend up and now we can dwell in higher realms, right? Everybody's talking about 5D and things like that. Well, guess what? You're going to you're gonna have to be mindful of what you put inside of your body. Like, do you think that Somebody who just finished snorting a line of cocaine is going to be able to sit down in meditation and 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 uh, uh, tap into the higher energies and and have a, a kundalini experience or or whatnot or get in contact with the higher self. Do you think that somebody who just ate a gigantic dinner or maybe who just ate let's say a whole bunch of pieces of candy, you think they're going to be able to sit down and really get in contact with the prana energy all around them? And deal with these subtle energies and integrate them inside of their anatomy. I don't think so. Just from just from a logical um, um, point of view, it's kind of obvious that it's not going to happen. So this is why we talk about the three food groups. We call them the um, the sattvic, which is the best in my opinion. Okay, and then the tamas, and then the uh, rajas. And I did an interview about this. I don't know if I put it up. I did put it up. We, and we also talked about it with um, Shana Dean a little bit. So, um, anyway, check the videos out. Let me know what you think. Sorry, this is going a little bit long, but check the videos out and then go ahead and comment down low because I really love the comments. I really love interacting and building this community of seven circles because I think that we are powerful, right? But we are extremely powerful when we are united. And with that being said, I hope that you have a great day, great week, great month, great year, and a great life. My name is Jonathan. Thanks for tuning in to seven circles until next time peace process of making white sugar can you believe it when the canes are ripe harvesters collect them load them into trucks and send them to sugar mills the conveyed sugar cane is deeply cleaned twice and after the impurities and debris are washed away the sugar cane is crushed into slag in the crushing machine this bagasse is then put into a grinder to start extracting the juice after being crushed by five grinders, the sugarcane juice flows into this vat through pipes. The juice has been extracted from the sugarcane and can now be processed into white sugar. After a series of tests by the technicians, the workers put special additives in the sugarcane 
and after stirring in this bucket for 6 hours, the workers take the samples and put them in the container for a few minutes, the impurities will slowly sink to the bottom, above is the purified juice. The sugarcane juice is then heated in an evaporator, which increases the concentration of the juice to 60%. Then in this vat, use a rotating wiper to skim off the foam on the surface, after heating, it will show such a syrup, and then pour a white solution into the syrup, which will make it easier to extract white sugar when combined with the syrup, and the two are mixed. It will then be processed into this sticky molasses, which is rotated in a high-speed centrifuge to separate the crystals and the syrup, and the water mist sprayed from the water pipe will clean the crystals, just like drying clothes in a washing machine. The process is the same. Immediately afterwards, the sugar that is not completely dried should be reduced in moisture in the dryer, until it reaches the standard index. Finally, the processed white sugar is put into bags for plastic packaging, and it is ready. Alright, so that was about sugar. Notice what they said that they put the additives in it, right? The additives, and then they added the other stuff, which was some bleach. But they didn't they didn't specify what those additives were. They didn't go into details. See, that's the role play that they use. Now, notice this next video that I'm putting out. It's about how they manufacture cocaine. Check out the similarities between how they make cocaine to how they make sugar. Check it out. Pick up a favorite snack and read the label. Do you need a chemistry degree to understand what you're about to eat? Well, Kitdo reports there are plenty of bizarre ingredients used to make many popular foods and they're all perfectly legal. Shopping for dinner. Hungry? Want a snack? Instant noodles? Soft drinks? Frozen entrees? They're fast, cheap, and easy. But did you know a lot of our favorite foods are made with ingredients or additives best described as bizarre? In any given month, 8 out of 10 Americans will eat or drink something that is processed with an ingredient they know absolutely nothing about. So with the help of Dr. John Swartzberg of UC Berkeley School of Public Health, KPIX5 assembled a smorgasbord of popular foods, all containing a weird ingredient. They put the good stuff. We asked Juliet and her daughter Rosie to play along in our game of what is it? Let's start with the healthy stuff, and then we'll work our way down to dessert. First up, shredded cheese. In it? Powdered cellulose. Well, cellulose is a plant product and it's made from a variety of plants, including, of course, wood. Whoa! It keeps your cheese from clumping. The more cellulose you put in, which is very cheap to make, the more money you make. <laughs> okay, next, in some frozen burritos, snacks, and pizza. What, what's in there? They all share L-cysteine. What's that? No idea. <laughs> L-cysteine is an amino acid, but not just any amino acid. This particular amino acid is made from Hair and duck feathers. Yep, human hair or duck feathers. That's gross. It's used as a dough conditioner to improve its texture. There is an ingredient found in some red juice and yogurt. Colored with carmine. Carmine? Sounds like Maybe a, a plant? Carmine is a natural red food dye made by boiling cochineal insects. <gasps> wow. If they ground them up, it made a beautiful red dye. Next up, granulated sugar. What makes it so sparkly white? Is it bleach? Nope. Some brands use charred animal bones or bone char. <laughs> to keep salt from caking up, some brands mixed in powdered sand or limestone. To clarify some white wines and beers, makers use a special filter called isinglass. It's made from bladders of bony fish. Hmm. And finally, those shiny little jelly beans. On the label? Confectioner's glaze. Confectioner's glaze? What's that? Sounds like, um, you know, like a sugar glaze that um, bakers would put on, say, donuts or something. Nope. Confectioner's glaze is shellac. <gasps> shellac is made from a specific insects in Asia. These bizarre ingredients are all legal to use in food. The FDA classifies them, as well as thousands of other additives, as generally recognized as safe, or grass for short. <laughs> as for Juliet and Rosie... I'll steer clear. In Silicon Valley, Kitto, KPIX5.
Mmm, hungry? Mmm. Mm. Well, one way to steer clear, experts say eat a diet rich in whole foods and low in processed ones. As for beer, Guinness is actually one company that no longer uses the dried bladders of bony fish to filter its brew. It's now vegan friendly.